the what's going on guys good morning i said, I said good morning sorry good evening <laughs> good evening um let's get into this word um you know i had to get my notes together before i start my papers and um today we are going to be doing some um prayers and um we're going to be using the authority that God has given us as the children of God. Now, you know, these are the things that God has revealed to me, of course, by reading the word of God and um, studying. And, uh, you know, of course, his children, he gives power, you know, especially if you read Luke, Luke uh, uh, 6, 619 or 1019. He said, behold, I give you um, authority. He said, behold, I give you power to shut up on um, scriptures and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And if you read the book of Genesis 1, uh, like Genesis 126, um, when he was speaking to Adam and Eve, when he, when he gave them, you know, he gave them basically dominion over the earth, over the animals, over the um, the fishes, you know, with the fowls of the air. So, you know, he said, um, I give you authority, you know, dominion, you know, I want you to multiply, replenish. Um, subdue, um, replenish, subdue the earth, you know, have dominion over the, um, the fishes of the sea, um, the fowls in the air, and over every creeping, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, every four-legged beast that creeps on, um, amongst earth. So, you know, he still has given us that, um, that authority, which is not walking, in, we're not walking in that authority that he's given us, and, um, you know, that scripture says, uh, we, he, you know, this is what God's frowning on. A lot of us believe in God. A lot of people believe in God in the church, but you know they don't believe in the power. So you know, a lot of us have been you know taught to be religious and not to be spiritual. You know, God doesn't like religiousness. You know, because being religious cuts off the spiritual essence of God and His sovereignty and His power, and of course what He has given us. You know, God said, uh, Jesus said that we will be able to do more to Him. You know. Only thing that separates us from him is that he was perfect. And, you know, he couldn't um, he couldn't commit any sin. And, you know, he said, just like I overcome the world, he said, be a good cheer for I overcame the world. So, you know, he's saying we we will we have the same the same um opportunity to overcome the world as long as you have faith in the Lord and as long as you you know you're walking and you you're known right, you known authority that you have. So, you know, he, he um he overpowered, he triumphed over principalities, um, powers, everything that's here today. He triumphed over them for us. You know, when he died on the cross, you know, he overcame everything. So everything that's evil in this world, he overcame it all. Principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, rules of darkness. So, you know, um, first and foremost, when you're dealing with spiritual warfare, it's always first and foremost to put on the whole armor of God because, you know, you want to withstand um the evil and the tactics and the lies of Satan, especially you see what's going on in the world. People aren't guarding themselves, so they they fall into all manner of doctrine of devils, all manner of deceit. This you know to be misled to think this is okay, like this is the way to go in life, but you know deny what Christ is telling you to do. You know take this route. This is this is what's fulfilling. This is what feels good for me. So do this. You know it's more than one way just to do it. When God told us, you know do it, do it this way. And um, if you read, let's just for example, let's go to Deuteronomy 28, just to break it off, just to break it off, you know, just to you know, give you a good understanding. Let's put it in here. Sorry, guys. So let's do it like this. We're going to do it just like this. So go to Deuteronomy 28. You know, just know, I'm gonna break it down to you. So Deuteronomy 28. Um, so. Let's get into it. I hope all is well. God is good. You know, give thanks to the Lord. So just give him thanks. Thank him that he, you know, he's woke you up this morning. It's allowed to see another day. Just give him thanks. Thank, thank the Lord that he, um, he's protected you. Um, he's keep your family safe. Um, Psalm 121, you know, he preserves you going in, you're going out. He needs to preserve you from all, from all evil. Thank the Lord that he's preserved you from all evil. Give thanks to the Lord that he's blessed you. Thank you. Give him thanks that he's, he, for his daily his daily bread that he gives you. Give thanks to the Lord for, you know, daily loading with benefits. You know, the benefits that he gives you. Protection, favor, healing, um, favor over, even over your um, own mistakes. He gives you favor even in the mistakes that you make. And he still, you know, makes sure you don't, um, you know, the enemy, he doesn't allow the enemy to, to um, destroy you. 
even though we deserve it. But God is a good God, a merciful God, a gracious God, and He loves us because we're His children. So, all right, I'm here. Three hundred twenty-eight. Now, it says this. And now it says this at the top: "Curse pronounced by Moses." You now I said, uh, "And this shall come to pass: that Thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God." This is one of my favorite um, um, scriptures. You know, as long as we diligently, you know, hearken to the voice of the Lord and to observe all His commandments, and you know, which which He has commanded us, that the Lord our God will set thee on high above all the nations on the earth. And it said, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He says that this, this is what he said he would do to his for shortening. He said, Blessed shall there be in the city, and blessed shall there be in the field. Blessed shall there be in the, the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall there be in thy basket of so, so this is a scripture. It's so good to pray over yourself every day. You know, you want to speak blessings of yourself. You know, you decree and declare that I'm, I'm my family. We're blessed from in the city and we're blessed in the field. I declare over my church members, what the fruit of our body should bless. Lord, bless the fruit of our ground, Lord. Bless the fruit of our um, cattle and the increase of our kind. Bless the work of our business. Bless our um, our animals, our food, our business. Um, and Lord, bless the increase of our kind and the flocks that our sheep. Although it bless, it says this, bless it shall be the basket in our store. So bless our storehouse, Lord God. And um, the Lord already said, if you, you know, if you tithe, you know, tithe, you go to church. When you give to the Lord, he said he will rebuke the devourer. On you. And he said he will fill, you know, your storehouses from heaven more than you can even, more than you can um, handle, more than you need. So he will give you an overflow of blessings more than you can ever expect when you give to the Lord. Because, you know, God is a God of overflow according to his riches and his glory that he, um, you know, he gives us. So the curse here, verse 6 says, Blessed shall it be in the come. Blessed shall it be when I come out. And blessed shall it be when I go to sin. So decree and declare, I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I come out in Jesus' name. It says this, The Lord will cause your enemies that, that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way, but fleece before you seven ways. So you know when an enemy is trying to put fear in your spirit, your heart, your mind, these are indicators and reminders. Allow this to come into your mind. So when you're feeling doubtful, when you feel like the enemy is trying to attack you, your, your heart and your mind, you decree and declare over yourself. I'm blessing the city. I'm blessing the field. You know, activate these scriptures. Invoke it. And it will, you know, it will move God to act on that behalf. So you got to fight for your faith. You know, boost your faith. This is building up your faith. So, you know, you will always defy what the enemy is trying to come and get you. So that's why he said uh, the weapons of um, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, uh, 10 or 16, sorry. But um, he said, uh, the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. They're pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, and pulling every high thing in the heavens that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against the knowledge of God. And bringing every thought to the captivity, to the obedience of Christ. So, you know, and revenging all disobedience. So to be ready to revenge all disobedience. You know, don't don't stand for anything that's of disobedience. You you, you avenge it with the word of God. You you defy it. You reflect it. You deflect it. You counteract it with the word of God. So anyone that's trying to um persuade you with lies, you know, the devil is very cunning. You know, yeah, people that try to persuade me like sage, you know, sage is very popular in in, in this day and age. And women make it seem like it's okay. And they have really the men are increasing, they're going right along with the women. So just know the devil loves to get the women to persuade the men to get them to say, okay, this is to get the capture us just like Adam and Eve. So um, so this is what he says, you know. I'm gonna go up. So it says this. Let me see. It says this. But it shall gonna pass the devil not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and the statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So it's many curses. And one of them, I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to just speak one. It says this. And it says, And thou shalt grope, grope at noonday as the blind grope at the darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoil evermore. And no man shall save thee. So, so basically, you're going to be robbed. And God is going to allow, you know, evil spirit, the devil, to rob you. It says, uh, Thou shalt be thought the wife. And another man shall lie with it. So, man, you, even your wife will end up cheating on you. This is the things that you know will happen to you. Thou shall build a house, and thou shall not dwell therein. 
Industrial plan of our yard, industrial not bad, that a great so He's saying you will sow, but you will not reap. But um, of course, of course, God, if you go to Hebrews 12, if you go to Hebrews 12, just to clear it up. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews definitely clears things up. So we need to, we want to always have an understanding. We don't want to uh, misconstrue things. Hebrews. Let me see. Hold on one second, guys. So fly always coming here. Now, one of these scriptures that gives you comfort when an enemy is trying to, you know, you know, bombard your mind. Romans eight one. You know, therefore there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ. So if you know you're in Christ. You, you know, don't, the devil's a lie. Don't allow him to accuse you. Or Revelation 12, you know, um, you know, the accuser of the brother, he's coming down to accuse. He's down here now, today in this world, accusing the children of God every day in front of God, you know, like bringing us to the court. Like, you know, I'm accusing this person because he did, he's doing this. And if you read the book of Job, he was doing the same thing. He was trying to, you know, have Job turn around and curse God because, you know, the thoughts that he would try to, he would try to, he little, just, he likes to afflict us. Satan can afflict you with um, pain, affliction, diseases, all type of manner. So Job went through it all. And um, not one time did he, you know, turn around and charge God like, I hate you. So, you know, this is what Satan wants to do. He wants to turn around and say, I hate God. You know, he's not helping me. Look what, look what my life has come down to. So we had to, we had, we had to fill us up with wisdom. The more wisdom you fill yourself with, the better defense and the more confident and the more um, faith you have in Jesus. You know, the lack of knowledge is what leaves you defenseless. Your wisdom is all, it's like, it's like a shield because you, 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 you can see things that you might try to form as an attack or as a threat to you. Remember, it's a spiritual world, life is spiritual. So say you can manipulate pretty much anything. You can manipulate men and women to, you know, form an alliance against you, literally. And uh, if you know the spiritual laws, uh, you know, the realm, the spiritual realm, they can't touch you. You know, Jezebel can touch the prophet Elijah. No matter what she was trying to do to him, she couldn't touch him. All she can, this is how they get you, fear. So, you know, that's, that was her way to get, you know, try to get to Elijah, you know, is to put fear. So, you know, they want to put fear in us. So don't allow fear to become your, 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 um, uh, a born place inside you. So that's why the Lord said, um, you know, keep your heart with all diligence, because out of it come, comes the issues of life. So, you have a lot of people that um, that's in a, in a pulpit. You know, they're going through all type of man of problems, torments in the mind, demons of torment. And you listen to these preachers; they don't have no power behind them. They might be speaking a word, but you know, they're not teaching these people how to, you know, walk in a full power. You know, he said, uh, "The weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty. It's mighty." Spiritual weapons, your prayers weapons. You know, when we speak the word of God, it's sharp, it's powerful, it's quick. Quicker than it's sharper than any two edged sword. Dividing and piercing the sun, the soul and soul and um, body, soul and um, body, and dividing bone and marrow. You know, and uh, testing the integrity of the heart and the man. So just know, you're doing things in the spiritual realm, just, you can never man. You're, just, you're destroying kingdoms, you're destroying demons. And uh, hold on, one so that says this Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse 24. And I said, uh, let's go. Hold on, one second, y'all. It says this, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Into the blood of sprinkling that speak of better things and that don't even so the blood of Jesus Christ it speaks protection over you. You know, that's why in Revelation 12 or 11 it says, For they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame Satan by the blood, the angels of God. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives until the day of their death. So that pertains to us. We overcome Satan's lives by the blood. We overcome every attack by the blood. We overcome every evil. Anyone speaking evil over your name by the blood of Jesus Christ. Anyone trying to curse you be overcome by the blood of Jesus. Anyone 
any attack of Satan trying to keep you sick and kill you with disease, the blood of Jesus will heal you. You speak that over yourself. By the blood of Jesus, I speak healing in my lungs. By the blood of Jesus, I speak healing over my organs, every organ in my body. And you can even put your head. So God said he's even anointed a hand. Now, let's go back to Hebrews. I mean, um, Deuteronomy. I might not be able to. I don't want to. You know, I want to keep you engaged. I don't want you to, I don't want to lose your, you know, you being pulled in. So the Lord, you know, he's saying you will bless the work of our hands. Now, when he say you bless the work of your hands, you know, he even anoint you. So everything you lay your hand on, he will bless it. He will multiply it. So even uh, even the laying of hands, if you read the book of um, Paul, he blessed people with the Holy Ghost by the laying of hands. John the Baptist, he blessed people with the war by water, baptism. And uh, Jesus, he blessed people with the Holy Ghost fire, the Holy Spirit. And with that being said, now I'm going to get into the, the real word, which I want to speak. Which I wanted to get to you so you can understand. So just know, you can touch your own self and speak healing on yourself. So right now, if you're going through any pain, it might not come when you want it, but speak it. If you read if, uh, Isaiah 53, verse 5, you know, he bore our sins and sicknesses, you know, um, our transgressions he bore um you know the, the piece of our chastisement was upon him and by the by his stripes you know they put stripes on his back by the power of the blood of his stripes we are healed so declare and decree that over yourself you know joe 22 verse 18 he said you should decree a thing and it shall be established so you talk you speak to your body you can tell you can speak to your organs in the name of jesus this lung this lung inflammation in my body in the name of jesus i command you to be healed I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Knock in and receive it. Whatever's going on in your life, whatever um, uh, pain, whatever ache, whatever afflictions you're putting in your, your, your back, your spine, in the name of Jesus, Lord, by the anointing that you have given me, Lord, by the anointing, by the, by the mantle of Elijah, Lord, I decree healing over my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. I, I decree and declare healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive. I declare. I speak healing over your over your body. I speak healing over your organs. I speak healing over your mind. I speak healing over your heart. I speak healing over your spirit. Any aches, any afflictions, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power. It's not by might, but it's by the Spirit of the living God. I decree healing over your body. I decree healing over your soul. I decree hitting over your spirit in Jesus' name. Every yoke of affliction, I command it to break in the name of Jesus Christ. I command every yoke of sickness, every yoke of joint pain, every yoke of muscle ache, I command hitting in the name of Jesus. Did they yoke break in the name of Jesus? Did they yoke break in the name of Jesus? Did they yoke break in the name of Jesus? In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So I declare in the name of Jesus, receive it and receive it in faith. The Lord said, you know, you, you should ask. You shall receive, and you should look. Ask and believe, and you shall receive. So whatever you ask in the Lord, you shall receive. Matthew seven seven. You said, "Ask the Lord, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open to you." In Jesus' name. So whatever being said, let's get into His Word. Now, even if you if you read the book of, let's get into it a little. Um, if you read the book of Peter, you read the book of Peter, the twelve disciples. That were with Jesus when they went the boat. Everyone knows about the scripture. When um Jesus was walking on water and he called Peter out of the boat. You know, Jesus came as a as a spirit. They were afraid. And Jesus said, Don't be afraid. It is me. You know, it's, it's me, Jesus. And uh, they were like, prove it. So he walked on the water. He said, uh, prove, he said, prove it. Let me come out and onto the water with you. So they came out, and, you know, Peter started walking on water. So he started treading on the water, walking on it. But um, you know, he he, he couldn't believe he's like, I'm really walking on water. Same thing we do in life. We're like, I'm walking on water. And uh, you start, he looked down at the water. But that's when he started sinking. So, you know, as soon as he started sinking, that's when he started crying out to the Lord. So, you know, that's the water stands for your situation that you're going through that seems like impossible. Something that, you know, seems like you can't get through on your own. So that's how you know. That's when you, you trust on God. He said, look at me. He wanted, he wanted Peter not to look at the situation. Look at me. You know, he said, peace be still to the winds. Because, you know, they was on a boat and they, they were scared. They were afraid. And Jesus was on the boat sleeping. He, he first they woke him up. He looked around and laid back down. 
And they were like, they looked at Jesus like he was crazy. So people look at you crazy when they see you in the situation that you're in and they see you calling. You know, that's your faith in God and Jesus Christ. When, you know, that's your faith, that's your calming. You're calming the storm. You could be calm in the storm. You're calm in the storm is your faith. And that's what God, that's what moves God when you're calm in your storm. When the when winds of life is raging, they come against you. You know, you command peace be still to every raging wind in the name of you. Every evil winds, every contrary winds of life coming against you. Every contrary winds of destruction. I command peace be still in the name of Jesus. I command peace be still in the name of Jesus. So look, if you read, I got another one in Jesus' name. So let's go to uh, let's go to Ephesians 37. Ephesians 37. And I have a prayer with this. Go to Ephesians 37, verse 8. And uh, so just know, look, one thing, a token. You have men and women that program, evil men, ages of darkness. They program the winds, you know. They can program winds to blow into a city and cause it to blow into a nation and cause destruction. It's called evil winds. People that are rulers of, rulers of darkness, they know these things. They can blow evil winds. They can program it. You know, they conjure it up. And they can cause evil winds to blow into a, um, a town to cause, you know, murders, rape, all sorts of de demonic activity. This is what they do to to whatever children, the children of God. They want they want to keep us down. So that's why most most of these stories in the book is about against people that worship false gods, that are you know that are, are you know children of disobedience and prophets of Baal and. You know, Jezebel, you know, if you read Revelation 12, I meant Revelation um, 2, and you said, oh, let's go to it now. Let's do it. So, so let's do it. If you go to the book of Revelation 2, it says this. And this is what God has sent us, verse 2 of Revelation 2. It says, I know thy works and thy labor. So, he knows our works, the Lord knows your works. He knows our labor and our patience. So have patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. So we can't bear those that, are, that do evil. It's like a thorn in his side. So it says, And thou hast tried them which, which say they are apostles, and they are not, and hast felt them not. So yeah, like I said, you know, he says this. See, mind you, he says, You have people that is calling themselves apostles, but they are not, and has found them lies. So we had to tolerate these things. So it says, I, it says And has borne and has patience. For my name's sake has thou labored and has not fainted. So the Lord, you know, he wants you to have the patience and to, you know, have patience and endurance in your labor in the body of Christ in the kingdom. And to not faint. It said, nevertheless, I have someone against thee because thou hast left that first love. So, you know, the Lord, you know, sometimes we we allow the world to draw us away from God. And, the, you know, to backslide into the world or to, you know, get cold. So, you know. The enemy loves when we, you know, we stop praying to God, when we stop worshiping God at, at, at nighttime before we go to sleep, or you don't speak to God before you go to sleep, and even give him thanks and, and worship him. God wants to worship him throughout the day. If you read the book of Daniel, you know, he prayed three times a day, and um, they made it, the king of Nebuchadnezzar, you know, if you read the book of Daniel 3, he tried to get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to bow down to his image and dance to his music, the flute, the harp, and the sick butt. So that's today. Satan wants us to bow down to his beast system. And just know, Satan is always looking who he can use to, um, you know, instill his system and try to make the children of God bow down to his system. That's what that's what it's gonna um, come down to in these last days. Are you gonna bow down to the enemy? Or are you gonna fight, fight for the Lord, stand um, in, on, on a rock? You know, God is a rock. He's a firm foundation. So make sure in these last days. Your foundation is firm because you know like I said just like they was in that boat the wind they had if you didn't have if you don't have a firm foundation you'll be like a, um, a house that's built on top of the sand but when the wind come blows it will blow your foundation away and you will, you'll be destroyed now if you have to make sure your foundation is un, and take root it has to take root in the earth so when things get rough in life things that you never seen coming you got to be ready for it spiritually physically and mentally and you know they will stay in the wilds of the devil so that's why ephesians 6 10 is so um you know very important to us you know say finally my brother be strong in the lord and the power of his might 
you know, put on a whole armor guard so that she may may be able to stand the wilds of the devil. So the wilds, he's he's always that wild sense. So like wild, right? He's always wilding around. That's how I would say it. He's always wilding around. See how he can um infiltrate you, penetrate you, destroy you. He has no emotions. He wants to kill you. He wants to kill the children God every day. So he's always he's always lurking. So let's fly. He's always trying to figure out how he can um, pull you into destruction. How he can knock you off the path that God has you know has put you on. So, you know, to walk in your, in your, 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 your um, God ordained um, path. So he, he wants you to remain. Look, he wants to, us to be in fear. He wants us to be living in disobedience. He wants us to be living in rebellion. He wants us to be living in transgression. And he already said this. You know, the people that are transgressors and the sinners, they will be gathered together and they will be consumed. Now, that's not mean we're not perfect. No, we sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. But if you don't seek the Lord's, you know, if you don't observe his um his commandments, you know, not to kill, not to steal, not to, you know, be a idolatrous, to commit um, you know, even murder. See, the murders murderers will not make it into heaven. So you have a lot of people in the rap industry who say, I'm a, um, you know, God is God is blessing me. And you just shot someone, you just shot to kill someone two weeks ago. So this is bewitchment. So men and women are be bewitched by spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Um, and it's that serious. So I'm going to continue. So it says, remember, it says, nevertheless, I somewhat have, have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. It says, remember, therefore, from whence art thou art fallen, and repent and do the work, do the first work. So do the first work of the Lord. It said, or else I will come unto thee quickly. So the Lord is speaking to those that, you know, have fallen. It says, uh, I said, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. It says this, but this thou hast thou hatest the deeds of the and Titus. So this doctrine of the devils that people um, are into. You know, they, they've, they have, hold on, I understand what I call black. So people have totally went the total opposite way of what God told them. Did you say not to serve false gods? Not to, for, um, yeah, people, he told us not to serve, um, the host, heavenly angels. You got people that worship angels, pray to angels. We only supposed to be praying to God. So um, it says this. It said, uh, he that had the ear, let him hear. What the spirit said unto the church, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. So the word of God is the tree of life, and of course, eternal life, to, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, um, Smyrna write, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. So, you know, we, we all was dead at one time. But of course, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ and turn our ways, turn from our ways and put on a new man and do off the old man, the way of thinking, the old way of being in life, which was, you know, not righteous, walking in unrighteousness and, you know, walking in righteousness of Christ. And um, so we overcome, you will overcome if you, if you're the only people that will overcome the world are those that are his children. So, of course, anyone else that's not his, they won't overcome, you know. When they, when they go through, through trials and tribulations, it's going to break them. It's going to cause them to go crazy. It's going to cause them to kill themselves. It's going to cause them to try to go to different religions and uh, spiritual spirituality to try to get peace, peace of mind, to try to, you know, um, do all type of man of things. So, you know, you have people that worship their ancestors because Satan has manipulated them, broken their faith. So it's a lot of people. It's people that have tried to persuade me to do the same thing. You know, that was Satan trying to use them. Just sway me away from being a believer in Christ, literally. Um, and it's still going on every day. There's, it's always someone being used against someone to cause them to err. And um, so I'm gonna scroll down. So this verse 13 says, "I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and there holdest my face name." So you know, Satan has an actual seat. Like I said, he's used no King Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel. Actually. Daniel, um, Daniel 3, let's go to Daniel 3, just so you can really get an understanding. And then I'm going to go back to Ephesians, and then we're gonna, I'm going to show you. Um, Daniel 3. Okay, now. Um... Let me see. Okay, verse 5. Now, this is what King Nebuchadnezzar was telling people to do. He wanted them to worship the graven image, his image, so like he was a god. So, of course, Satan wants to be God. So, you know, he uses men in the flesh 
to get that on, uh, you know, that same thing people do for God. You know, people, God is the most, Jesus is the most talked about thing in earth. God, talked about God in earth from generation to generation. Of course, Satan is jealous. You know, that's why he was kicked down from heaven. You know, as a light, he shot down his lightning because he tried to compare himself to um, God. God was like, no, shot him down. So, um, verse 5 says, that at what time ye hear the sound of the corner, the flute, the harp, the sack, but pulsary, do some and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Whoso falleth not down worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the fairy furnace. So this is what it feels like for the children of God. You know, the enemy will cast us in a fairy furnace in life. He will put you in a situation that doesn't feel good because you know, you turn away from, you know, bowing down to um, you know, his system or being, uh, you know, of the world. Yeah, Romans 12, two, verse 2, uh, you know, the Lord said, do not conform to the world. So when you conform to the world, you're basically going to be bound down to, to, to Satan's music, everything. So even down to the music that you listen to. When we, when we bow down to the Lord, I mean, to the Satan's, uh, you know, rap music, this is one way how he captures people's souls. You know, we're not supposed to be listening to this type of music. This, they weren't listening to this type of stuff and these these lyrics back then. You know, I used to listen to illicit music, and um, I stay far away from it now because I know how serious it is and how it can influence your spirit, your mind, and soul. And um, yeah, it's that serious, guys. Now, let's go to the um, look. Just know, King Nebuchadnezzar got humble. He humbled him. If you read verse chapter four, it says. It's, Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to shew the signs and wonders that, that the high God had wrought to him. So he went from trying to, you know, trying to get them to bow down to, you know, um, saying God is a God of signs and wonders. He said, how great are his signs and how mighty are his, you know, he told, he took his kingdom away. He said, uh, he said, how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation, just like his name. I never can answer it now, but look, he had a dream. You know, he, he went from, you know, giving God glory to, you know, backsliding. Again, trying to, you know, allowing Satan to use him, and, you know, buffer him to make him, you know, like, I'm, I want power. I want to be worshipped. I, I want to feel like a God. So he had this dream that God gave him. It was a dream of him being humble and being in a situation where <clears throat> he was basically like an animal. He, God made him, you know, Basically, like, remember how Satan, how God said, you know, curse Satan, you know, you'll be, you'll, you'll eat nothing but the dust. So basically, he, let, he made King Nebuchadnezzar be with animals. His nails were long, he had hair like, long hair like an animal, and he lost his kingdom. So if you go to the verse, it says, then it's a little, uh, it said, I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed, and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore, I made a decree to bring in all the wise of Babylon before me, that they might make it known unto me the interpretation of the dream. They came in the magicians, the Ashadahs, the Chaldeans, and the Susheds, and I told the dream before them, but they did not make known unto me the interpretation. He said, but at last, Daniel, Daniel was a man of God. He said, he came in before me whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and whom is the spirit of the holy God. So he had the spirit of the living God in him. And it says this, and before him I told the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, master of the magicians. So he tried to go to these witches and wizards and diviners to try to get answers on the dream, and they couldn't even interpret it. You know, God is not going to reveal, he's not even going to reveal those things to, you know, to them. So it says, because I know that the spirit of, oh, I'm sorry. It says, tell me the vision on my dream that I have seen in the interpretation of the arm. So that's where the vision on my head and my bed, I saw him hold a tree in the middle of the earth. And the height of it that was great, and the tree grew, it was strong, and the height thereof reaching to the heaven, and I sight thereof to the end of all the earth. Now, let's skip over. Let's skip over. Um... Let's go to the book of, um, let's go back. This is what Shabbat Mashiach in the middle of just so you can get an understanding. So, if you go to the book of verse 16 of chapter 3, it says this, Shabbat Mashiach in the middle of Let's go to, um, 15. It said, now, if you ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, suckle, but poetry, and dokuma, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I had made. Well, but if he worship not, he shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? 
So this is what Satan will try to speak, speak into your mind and make you think. He can't deliver you out of your situation. He can't deliver you out of your predicament. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. So, said, it said, we have no need to answer you. It, it said, if it be so, if God does not deliver us, God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace, you know, the fairy trial that you're in, that you think is going to destroy you. It said, and he, it said, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. It said, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So then Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, in the form of the visit, was changed against Shabbat, Meshach, and Abednego. And there, for he spake and commanded that he should heat the furnace one seven more times, that it was one to be heated. So his attitude, his, his attitude, his fierce, his anger, his um, rose, got hotter. So, you know, he put more pressure on him. And, it said, and, he, and he commanded the most mighty men that were, were in his army to bind Shabbat, Meshach, and Abednego at the chasm in the free furnace. So bind, they spiritually bind him. So, you know, Satan will try to, you know, put affliction on your mind, affliction on your body, you know, afflict you with fear, afflict you with anxiety, afflict you with, um, make you heavy hearted and weary. To wear you out because you know you're not bowing down. So you know, say he can do all type of manner of attacks on you, and he used these witches, the magicians, to do it. So you know, that's the same today. Witches and witches come against the children of God. You don't even know it. You know, they have assignments to go against people in the church, and I have a personal experience. You know, this woman I met, I think she she might be still fighting me today, but um, you know, uh, at first of all, she was trying to get me to do all this stuff that she did that's not of God, and. And one person told me, though, um, witches and wizards, they can't have children. And I don't even think she got babies no more. So these are the type of consequences that, um, you know, God will strike a witch. You know, you will not, you'll be childless. And it says that in um, Isaiah 47, you'll be childless. And, and you, you'll become a widow. So this is God's consequence for those that, are, you know, try to sacrifice people. Witches can sacrifice people. And these are the type of evil things they do today, you know. You know, a lot of people don't talk about it because they're afraid. But you do you, you do have people that speak up on these things. So you have people that's in fear. They be like, man, I'm afraid to speak about this. So God knows that a person is afraid to speak the truth. So, you know, it's, the truth shall set you free. And that's the truth saying. The truth will set you free. So you're not supposed to be bowing down to no moons, to no gods, no angels. So, you know, anything that's outside of Jesus Christ, you know, you have all these other religions. They bow down to Mary, angels. They bow down to, you know, Allah, Buddha. All these gods, Malak, um, and it's all false gods. So they ignorantly or self-consciously, and they've been bewitched and manipulated, sorcery by the powers that be. Um, they're going to be destroyed for if they don't repent and turn away from it. So that's why God said, I will, I will come down on you quickly and, um, you know, smite you with the sword of my mouth. So, so if it says, uh, so he turned up the heat on Shabbat and Meshach and Abednego and said, he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind them. Spiritually bound them. Then these men were bound in their coats, their husband, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shabbat, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shabbat, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the fairy furnace. Like it was getting heavy on them. So they fell down. And said, Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished. And rose up in haste and spake. I said unto his council, Did not we just cast these three men bound to the midst of the fire? In unbelief. So Satan, it would be in unbelief that you know, I, I had to, all the things that he tried to bring upon your life, or even your enemies. They were like, Man, we 